Hi everyone, meteorologist Brian Bennett. Here's a very latest update on Tropical Storm Ada. Just a few moments ago, the Hurricane Center did downgrade the storm from a hurricane to a tropical storm. The winds only dropped five miles per hour from 75 to 70, but you need 74 to have a hurricane. So we are now dealing with a tropical storm. Will it re-intensify into a hurricane? It will not. We will never see a hurricane Ada again, so we're done with hurricane status. It's going to be a tropical storm and then eventually become a tropical depression once it moves across the Florida Peninsula and then be a storm for the fishes. All right, looking at the infrared satellite imagery here, you can you can tell a couple things. First of all, let me turn on the telestration here. You can see where the center of circulation is located. It's located right about here. Uh, that would be the eye if we were dealing with a stronger hurricane, but right now it's uh, just kind of a cloudy center, and that's located roughly due west of the Venice area, getting pretty close to approaching Sarasota. Uh, another thing we can see is that a lot of the convection is on the north side and northeast side of the storm. Two reasons. We have wind shear that is blowing the upper cloud tops to the northeast, and we have dry air feeding in. You see this gray color here? This represents dry air, and that is actually being fed into the storm, and that's part of the reason also that the storm is weakening. We have the wind shear, we have the dry air feeding in, and also we're getting into areas where the Gulf of Mexico isn't quite as warm. So that's great news, because we don't want to deal with a Cat 5 hurricane. Nonetheless, we are going to be contending with a tropical storm throughout your evening. That still means a possibility for some heavy downpours, strong gusty winds, and storm surge flooding in your more prone locations. Here's a look at the National Hurricane Center official track, and it takes a storm up to the north, scraping parts of Pinellas County, and then actually making landfall around the Citrus or Levy County areas right around I'd say, they're saying 7 a.m., maybe even a little bit earlier than that. So early Thursday mornings when the center of circulation will be making landfall. So we'll be dealing with this uh, tropical storm conditions throughout the evening and the overnight hours, especially areas to the north, once that rain starts to pull off into the northern part of the peninsula. All right, here's a look at all the watches and warnings. We have a lot of them. I'm not going to go through all of them. Just know that we have everything you would expect to be associated with a tropical storm. That includes storm surge warnings and tornado watches and rip current advisories and flood warnings. Yeah, we got it all. So it's actually, let's turn off those labels so you can, uh, you can see it's a little better. One second, let me hide the hazards. There we go. Okay, and then let's actually zoom in a little bit here. And again, you can see this motion. So you can see the center of circulation located uh, just west of the North Port and Venice area, located right about there. And again, notice that it's drier on this back side here. Uh, part of that is the fact that the radar is having a little bit of difficulty reaching that far out into the Gulf. The other part of that is, is there is less rain on the western side. So once you get the center of circulation past you, then you're going to be drying out pretty quickly. Uh, so we're going to see the storm continue to move in and move out and uh, and then be a thing of our past. These numbers right here, these are current wind gusts. So right now, uh, just offshore of the Sarasota area, we are looking at a 54 mile per hour wind gust down here. Uh, west of Marco Island, a 54 mile per hour wind gust. And right here in this uh, almost like the outer rain band uh, i don't really want to call it an eye wall it's not quite an eye wall it's more of a a an inner band of this tropical storm that's where we're going to find the the strongest winds and also the most likelihood for storm surge flooding as this moves off to the north northeast right around 10 miles per hour all right so that's actually you know what let's switch over to radar scope my personal radar here and slide this over okay and bring the telestration back and here we have sanibel island just to kind of get your perspective here there's cape coral i'm tracing up the coast of sarasota and there's sarasota right there and here's bradenton and anna maria and then the bay is located right here pinellas county and st petersburg and then going up through parts of pasco county all right so that is the florida coastline we are looking at the center of circulation located right here. And again, this area right here, this inner rain band, is where you're going to see the very heaviest rain 
and also the strongest wind gust as well. So again, this storm is moving off to the north northeast right around 10 miles per hour. So let's go ahead and let's drag this out. Uh, let me turn on the, uh, the inspector here, the distance tool, and let's drag this out, moving to the northeast. And that's telling me that it's about uh, about maybe seven hours away. So roughly 7, 8 p.m. would be the most likely time for the strongest winds to be occurring in coastal Pinellas County. That includes St. Pete Beach and Clearwater Beach. And then you want to add about an hour or two for every county that you go north of Pinellas County. So Pasco County, instead of 7 or 8 p.m., you're dealing with maybe 8, 9, 9.30 uh, for the heaviest weather, the strongest wind associated with this kind of inner eye wall as it scrapes that area. And then eventually Citrus County, you'll be dealing with that uh, this uh, inner eye wall as we move towards the late night and early morning hours. All right, let's, uh, let's turn off the telestration here and go back to our weather images. Okay, and slide this over a little bit so we can see it better. Okay, again, turn off the telestration. Okay, all right, this is the high resolution rapid refresh model and we'll just take it into the future here so you can kind of see what the model is predicting. So here we are at about 8 p.m. and sure enough, the model verifies with what we did. We were doing a little bit of what's called now casting. It's how meteorologists used to forecast uh, before we had all these computer models. Uh, so fortunately, our now casting actually agrees with the computer models. So right around 8 p.m., we're going to see that inner eye wall scraping parts of Pinellas County. That indicates really heavy rain possible and also some strong gusty winds on the order of 50 to 60 miles per hour. If not, a stronger gust may be up to approaching 65 or maybe 70 miles per hour in a an isolated spot anywhere from Bradenton up through uh, Clearwater or even up through the Newport Ritchie could see those stronger wind gusts because mainly because Pinellas County is kind of sticking out here it'll have a chance for a higher wind gust being closer to that inner rain band. All right so this is the what the radar will look like right around 7 or 8 p.m. Let's fast forward a little bit. Let's go to 1 a.m. This is 1 a.m. The center of circulation is still offshore, but we're still getting some heavy downpours training inland, which is going to continue to exasperate the flash flooding risk that's going to occur throughout the evening and overnight hours. And not only for the immediate coast, but we're looking for the possibility for some flooding rain in our inland areas as well, inland parts of uh, Pasco County, even approaching parts of Polk County. That's a possibility as well. And the last frame we have here, this is Thursday morning, right around sunrise. The center of circulation is making landfall. It's located right about there. And notice that some of these rain bands are still being kind of drug up to the northeast. So some heavy downpours to the east uh, of this center of circulation. But once you get behind this center of circulation, we're looking at dry air. This is all all relatively dry so it's going to dry out pretty quickly behind this storm and again it will continue to move off to the northeast over Jacksonville but by the time it gets to Jacksonville it will be weakened considerably okay so let's uh, let's turn off the telestration again and now take you over to storm surge flooding that is another big risk with this tropical system and really any tropical system you guys know that uh, now this is a pretty cool map this is an interactive map if you want to pull this up on your on your phone or on your laptop, which might be better, uh, go to the National Hurricane Center webpage and then go to ADA and then click on Storm Inundation. And that's actually going to show you this interactive map here. And what it will show you is what type of storm surge flooding you can expect in your area. Where you see the blue, that means an inundation of about a foot as possible. Inundation, that means water that's going to be on land that is normally dry. So in the blue color here, we're looking at the possibility of water coming on shore about a foot deep on normally dry land. The yellow represents possibly three feet of water. And I know that right there. That's uh, this area, excuse me, this area right here. Actually, let me circle it in case you can't see where I'm pointing. Uh, this is Passagrill. Passagrill floods every time there's a tropical event anywhere nearby. So I know Passagrill is going to have a little bit of storm surge flooding, especially that area by the Don Cesar. And then spotty surge 
flooding in your typical locations uh, along the coast and even even areas inside the bay here we're looking at a little bit of inundation as well and one thing I want to show you too real quickly here is notice uh, this river here and we're actually looking at inundation a good 15 20 miles inland keep that in mind for future tropical systems that when you get the wind pushing the water up in the bay it can then be pushed up the rivers like a straw so that if we were to get a major hurricane one day that water could inundate areas well inland along rivers of course that would be a concern for the Hillsborough River which travels up through Tampa fortunately though this storm not quite strong enough to do that so just some uh, kind of minor storm surge flooding okay so that's uh, kind of the surge flooding, flooding that can be expected in the immediate bay locations you head a bit farther north sorry about that if I'm making you dizzy with the map uh, and we're looking at uh, Pasco County there, we're looking at Hernando County, head up towards Homosassa Springs, and you're looking at a bit more inundation, but that's because it's more of a marshy area as well. Okay, let's switch on over to the precipitation totals. How much rain are we going to get? Looking at the high resolution rapid refresh model and going into the future. Let's go all the way out to about sunrise on Thursday, and we're looking for the possibility on average through central Florida of about one to three inches of rain and you get closer to the inner rain uh, rain band and we're looking for the possibility of an additional five or six inches of rain now keep in mind much of Pinellas County even Hillsborough County has already picked up one two maybe even three inches of rain so we're looking at the possibility for an additional five inches of rain or so so a storm total right here along the coast is possible on the order of about six, seven, eight, maybe nine inches of rain. So definitely a soaking rain. You may have already been under a tornado warning today. The front right quadrants of tropical systems almost always contain a lot of circulation, which can result in a water spout or a tornado that will continue to be a risk. You see here we are at uh, the later evening hours, that inner eye wall is scraping parts of Pinellas County, and in those rain bands, you can actually see uh, the most likelihood for something tornadic developing or even a water spout. So you want to keep your weather radio on if you have one, because the potential risk will be there overnight tonight for uh, something to spin up, something very quick and usually weak, fortunately, in these tropical systems. All right, here is the wind forecast. And going into the future here, you can see, let's go ahead and pause it right about there. So here we are at 5 p.m. And we're looking at kind of the reddish color here. The reddish color, reddish color represents winds blowing right around 54 knots, so close to 60 mile per hour wind gust in the Anna Maria area. Okay, 60 mile wind gust there. And then going into the future a little bit more, here we are. Uh, this is 8 p.m. Remember that uh, inner rain band I was talking about? Here it is, and here are the strong winds associated with it. So we're looking at winds gusting at Fort DeSoto, Clearwater Beach, on the order of kind of the, the darkish reddish color. So close to 55 knots, which would be about 60 to 65 miles per hour gust possible. Uh, on the western coast of Pinellas County and even up in the bay we're looking at winds gusting on the order of 50 miles per hour or so. So again this confirms the strongest winds are expected to be right around 8 p.m. in the immediate Tampa Bay area Pinellas County and Hillsborough County and then the storm will continue to move off to the northeast so Pasco County, Hernando County you're seeing some strong wind gusts as we move through the early nighttime hours and then it was a head towards sunrise on your Thursday morning. There's a center of circulation and it will be making landfall in the Citrus or Levy County areas. All right, another thing I want to look at real quick here. We mentioned storm surge. When do you get storm surge? Well, yeah, you're right. Obviously, you get it with tropical systems, but you also get it when you have an onshore wind. Now, remember with tropical systems, you have counterclockwise rotating winds. So in this instance right here, the winds are blowing offshore. That is not a situation where you get storm surge flooding. You get storm surge flooding when you get the onshore winds, which is going to be on the eastern side of the storm 
and the southeastern side as well is where we'll get those onshore winds that will bring the storm surge flooding. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. So here we are. Let's fast forward to 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Notice these winds are blowing in this general direction. So they are blowing right up into the bay. So 8 p.m. is when we're going to see that possible storm surge maximum. Unfortunately, that does actually coincide with our high tide as well. So we could see some somewhat significant storm surge flooding in the more prone locations of Tampa Bay this evening because the fact that the high tide will be coinciding with the strongest winds in this storm. So keep that in mind if you're in an area that is prone to storm surge flooding. And then let's fast forward to uh, let's go to 2 a.m. Here we are at 2 a.m. And notice that we are looking at the onshore winds uh, right there. Newport Ritchie, uh, Pinellas County, still Tampa Bay uh, is where we see the onshore winds and the storm surge flooding continuing to be a possibility. Okay. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and look at the tides real quick. Let me show you this. This is uh, from tide-forecast.com. And we are looking at a low tide occurring in St. Petersburg at about 1030 uh, this morning, which we already had. And then a high tide happening at about 502 p.m. So five, five o'clock, a high tide, a uh, low tide, uh, excuse me, the high tide at 1039, low tide at 502. And then our next high tide will be at 11 p.m. in St. Petersburg. And Clearwater Beach, I believe, is around 8.30 p.m. So roughly 8.30 to about 11 p.m. is when we're going to see the high tides around the Tampa Bay area. And that is also when we're going to be experiencing the strongest winds as well. And notice with these tides, the water goes from about zero feet above mean sea level to about two feet above mean sea level. So that means that we're looking at an additional two feet just purely because of the impact from the moon and the sun in the natural tidal cycle. So we're getting an additional two feet. Now you factor in the storm surge, which is going to be on the order of about two, maybe three feet. And then in total, that brings us into the risk for having a storm surge total of about three to five feet. So that's why the National Hurricane Center here is forecasting the possibility in Tampa Bay, Pinellas County, Bradenton, Anna Maria, Holmes Beach, Siesta Key, uh, down to Venice, even upwards to Anclo River, a uh, three to five foot storm surge flooding. That does include the high tide. And then you get a little farther north and we're looking at the storm surge flooding. Uh, they're saying two to four. I honestly wouldn't be surprised to see that three to five up here uh, in this area around Citrus County as well. we got some low line marsh areas. We're going to have some strong winds. So honestly, I think this area could be in the three to five range as well. All right. All right, guys. I, I hope that I answered a lot of your questions. This was a pretty long broadcast. I didn't intend on it being that long. So hopefully you gained some information from it. If you have any questions, feel free to zip me a line. And I'm probably actually going to be going live a little bit later this evening from the beach and taking a look at things out there. All right, everybody stay safe and have a, a good evening. Best you can, at least, with a tropical storm moving in.